JT here. I am accepting the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. I'm Jen Franson, and I accept this ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. challenge go absolutely viral last year. Now we want to talk a little bit about ALS, what it was all about. Please welcome Dr. Marjorie Dixon here. Walk us through. See, when I took the challenge, I thought at the time, okay, are we actually learning about the disease right now? And uh, the good thing is that a lot of money was made. Exactly. I just donated money, by the way. I love that you took the water. <laughs> I, you know, I didn't necessarily want to, so I also donated money, but I thought if this is a way to raise awareness. Absolutely. I know I grew up uh, with a girlfriend who lost her father to this in high school, mm -hmm. and I saw what it did to her family yeah, and amazing. how difficult it was to have his brain so sharp and his body betraying him. Uh, absolutely, yeah. So, so let's explain what exactly it is. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is what it's absolutely. ALS stands for. Yeah, so if you break it up, so the word says exactly what it is. A it means absence of, mm -hmm. myo is muscle, trophic is helpful or nourishing to the muscle. So a myotrophic, lateral, so the nerves run in the lateral aspect of the spinal cord. And sclerosis, when the nerves degenerate and stop feeding the muscles, the muscles shrink up and the degenerated nerves end up being sclerosis. Sclerosis just means hardening. Right. So the lateral aspects of the spinal cord get hardened. So it's a spinal cord thing, it's a neurodegenerative uh, Neurodegenerative disease. and it's progressive, right. and it's insidious and it's slow, and it generally starts with the voluntary muscle movement. So the, it's called an upper and lower motor neuron disease, and these motor neurons run in these lateral aspects of the spinal cord coming from the brain, right. emanating from the motor neuron. So it's a lot of neurology. Um, but as these brain cells degenerate, the muscles don't get the signals or the, the messages from the synapses anymore, so they waste. So it typically presents with lateralizing weakness, so limb or difficulty walking, for example, mm -hmm. and then it moves to other muscles that we voluntarily control. So muscles of speech, it's called dysarthria, so inability to properly form words, difficulty swallowing, and then eventually it's the difficulty breathing. That's the one that ends up um, limiting lifespan significantly. So it's a very complicated diagnosis and it can mimic other neurologic disorders, can be mistaken for it. So it's very important when, for example, a mother or a sister or cousin or thinks that, oh, you know, I was watching this ALS ice bucket challenge and you're having trouble moving your right arm, you may have ALS. Well, no, the person needs to go see a physician or a neurologist who will then go through a sequence of very careful clinical testing and then su other subsequent tests that get done, neurologic tests. And then they get referred off to a specialist in ALS. Okay, yeah. and who is at risk? Who's at risk? So it can affect, it affects many Canadians yearly. So a, a thousand uh, patients are diagnosed with ALS yearly. Mm -hmm. 2,500 Canadians to, to 3,000 Canadians are living with it everywhere. Um, females, males, it doesn't discriminate. Um, it goes across socioeconomic status, so against cultural backgrounds. So anybody's at risk. Generally, it strikes, it strikes people when they're between their 40s and 70s. Um, most of it is sporadic. So sporadic just means unfortunate bad luck. Really? So it's, so not, it's yeah. like caused by nothing? It's not so much that it's caused by nothing, but we still haven't been able to pinpoint what exactly is the cause that will initiate the issue. Mm -hmm. So the sporadic cases, now there's much research. So ALS Canada is this overseeing um, body that has raised all this money, raised $16.2 million. Yeah. From the Ice Bucket Challenge from the specifically? Ice bucket, yeah, 16.2 16 million dollars. And so ALS Canada then works to support the variety of ALS societies that are provincially based. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are 10 of them in the Ontario provinces. Mm -hmm. And then they have um, the ability to fund and help to find research to find a cure. So everybody's looking into genetics. They have identified certain genes, but of course they are involved in the pathology of the illness. They haven't been able to pinpoint and say, okay, let's find a cure for it using this gene yet. Yeah. So there's much research and time needed. And this, we're fortunate in each of our provinces that we have specific groups of physicians who are working together. So it's not just neurologists. If you think of patients who are afflicted with ALS, and I talked about the limb weakness, and then I talked about the difficulty speaking and the difficulty swallowing and how it's degenerative and progressive, People learn to live with their disease for the period of time from their diagnosis till 
sometimes until when they eventually, unfortunately, succumb to the illness. Mm -hmm. So there are groups of physicians and multidisciplinary teams that work together. So neurologists, um, social workers, uh, speech pathologists. Um, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, nurses, wonderful fantastic teams that deal with specifically patients with ALS to help them and support them living in their environment and hopefully keeping them as healthy as possible for as long as possible. How long is that usually? How it's long is average, the somewhere usually? between two to five years average. Now there is, that's in um, the more common variants because there are variants of disease because people will say, I know someone with ALS who, who did well, they lived for eight to 10 years and somebody else, they succumbed to their illness in 23 months. So yeah. there are variants of disease. So when you say ALS, it is really an umbrella of motor neurodegenerative diseases. Mm -hmm. And there's also a juvenile type. So if people are diagnosed with it younger in their teens or in their 20s, generally that is a more s slowly progressing, uh, people have a much longer lifespan with that variant of disease. Alice right? Stephen Hawking. Alice Stephen Hawking. So yeah. diagnosed at 21, yeah, yeah. just turned 70. 70. Yeah. That is a long lifespan to be living Abs with ALS. Absolutely. And you know, when you think about him, there's a movie out and people are getting, again, more awareness about motor neuron disease. But mm -hmm. his is not the typical experience of it. He, he had a, a phenomenal and um, rare variant of disease mm -hmm. and you know it would be interesting to be able to, to we have I'm not involved in treatment I don't know any neurologist that I haven't interviewed anybody that has been involved in his particular treatment so I can't really speak to him mm -hmm. however knowing ALS and the typical lifespan with the disease his is an unusual variant of the right disease. and I mean he also has an unusual brain he's a I genius mean, this guy's yeah, a genius he's like right? mathematician physicist amazing yeah. okay listen we are going to put the link to ALS Canada on our website cityline.ca I encourage you to go there to get all the information but that was a great little refresher course and what it's all about mm.